Picture this. It's another Monday morning, and you've just convinced yourself not to call in sick. You want to jumpstart this lagging day, so you hop over to your local coffee shop for a quick caffeine boost. As you take the first sip, something feels off. The coffee tastes different. It's flatter, less vibrant, and missing its usual aroma. You realize that coffee has lost its taste everywhere. And so, just like your Monday mornings, you realize that your savior coffee has also become bland for good. Okay, you might want to be sitting down for this. More than 2.25 billion cups of coffee are drunk every single day, making it the most popular drink in the world, well, only after water. So if you're one of the one billion people who cannot resist a good cold brew or a nice foamy latte, there's a new blend in town that could change the taste and economy of coffee forever. Climate change. Believe it or not, climate change is gradually altering the essence of the world's favorite drink. Coffee is more than just a trend. It is a commodity of great significance to humanity at large. Coming from the highlands of Ethiopia in the 9th century, coffee has traveled across continents, shaping societies, economies, and even human psychology in a huge way. Today, coffee is irresistible. Coffee has become a culture of its own. To read a book, see your friends online, or see them in real life, a cup of joe is always there for us. Around the world, coffee is grown on 27 million acres of land. If laid out in a straight line, 27 million acres would stretch over nearly twice the circumference of the Earth. Over 70 countries grow and export coffee from the area around the equator and between the two tropics, forming what is called the coffee belt. In these countries, the climate conditions make it perfect for coffee to thrive. And even within this club of countries, the regional climate differences create mind-blowingly unique coffee flavors. Interestingly, out of the 120 different varieties of coffee grown in the world, most of the coffee we consume is actually made from just two types of beans, the Arabica and the Robusta. The Arabica coffee almost has a cult of its own. Mostly grown in South America, this bean makes up 60 to 70% of all the coffee produced globally. If you've ever had a coffee outside, chances are that you already know what Arabica tastes like. Most leading coffee houses like Starbucks, Dunkin', and Tim Hortons all claim to use only Arabica beans to make all their coffee. Beloved by coffee lovers for their vibrant and complex flavors, the Arabica beans offer a sweeter, softer taste with hints of fruits, flowers, chocolate, and nuts, albeit with higher acidity. But they're also more expensive and immensely delicate to harvest since they only prosper at certain altitudes and temperatures. While we're talking about Arabica, let's not forget the Robusta. The Robusta bean also has a very strong case to make for itself. Robusta, as the name suggests, are pretty robust, not just in taste, but in temperament as well. They can thrive at lower altitudes, grow faster than Arabicas, and give a bigger yield. They are tougher against pests and weather making them cheaper too. And yes, Robusta coffee beans also pack a stronger caffeine punch. It's not just all the millions of coffee houses or coffee connoisseurs or the average student trying to maintain their GPA. The livelihoods of nearly 120 million people directly depend on the success of this coffee. For countries like Ethiopia and East Timor, coffee is what's driving most of the national economy. Even for other countries like the UK, which is dealing with high unemployment, coffee alone is able to create over 210,000 jobs for the economy. Truth is, the coffee industry is already struggling. Right now, the coffee industry is grappling with a significant supply shortage, which is not helped by surging demand fueled by the ever-growing coffee culture. And that is just in addition to the existing supply chain, sourcing ethics, and biodiversity problems. One would think that the biggest coffee producers in the world would also be the biggest drinkers, right? But have a look at this. These are the biggest producers. And these are the biggest drinkers. On top of all these, Climate change is poised to cause significant disruption in this already troubled situation. 
Let's have a look at how it might unfold. Flavor, quality, yield, and production. These are all very important factors to ensure coffee's stability, and climate change is threatening all of them. Our beloved morning brews could turn into a morning brew as 60% of all coffee species face complete extinction. Do you recall the coffee-producing countries we mentioned before? This is a side-by-side -side view of coffee-producing countries versus countries most vulnerable to climate risk. These countries are facing massive climate stress, which is not helping the case of coffee. At the crop level, climate change is actually transforming the core cultivation of coffee beans. Let's talk about Arabica coffee, the backbone of 70% of global coffee production. Arabica thrives in temperatures between 64 to 70 degree Fahrenheit, but as the mercury rises, the coffee fruit ripens prematurely, badly hurting bean quality. In fact, a simple increase of one degree Celsius can also stunt its growth. A study led by various researchers in the USA analyzed over 70 sources, and they found that coffee's taste and aroma are affected by three primary factors. Water stress, higher temperatures, and increased atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. These factors influence the acids, lipids, and sugars present inside the bean, ultimately impacting the way the beverage tastes. Climate change has a role to play here as well. You see, with changing vegetation and topography farmers are struggling greatly to find higher grounds to produce better coffee. A Nicaraguan study assessed this relationship by creating models based on the IPCC frameworks and predicted that in 2050, that is, in less than 30 years, the overall capacity to produce acidic and flavorful coffee beans will decline. Yet another study uncovered that changing weather could explain up to 36% of the variation in robusta coffee yield anomalies in the central highlands of Vietnam. This could chop away almost one quarter of the farmer's revenue. If things continue, this cascading effect can change coffee forever. So, is our future completely decaf? What can we do about it? The future of coffee could be something like this. First, we'll probably see a shift in the coffee-growing regions of the world, especially the ones that produce the popular Arabica beans. That means the rich, fruity undertones of the coffee we're used to could soon perish. Climate change can literally leave a bitter taste in the mouth. But at the same time, there is a lot of hope and optimism to avoid these risks. And this time, our so-called enemy could become our best friend. There's some research that shows that controlled atmospheric CO2 could actually end up mitigating the risks on coffee caused by temperature. Who knew, right? Even as we speak, policymakers and climate scientists are actively recognizing and planning for these risks. Agricultural experts and geneticists are also working on increasing biodiversity among the coffee species looking to make the plant even more flexible and resistant. So who knows? Maybe we'll get introduced to new and even better tasting coffee in the future. All we know is that we're at such a time right now where we cannot be complacent. We need to deeply realize the effects of climate change on our daily lives and work on it. Here's hoping we never lose our caffeinated best friend until next time. 